Hey guys and girls, welcome to our YouTube channel. All right, today we've got a couple of parts for the GMC Canyon, the 5.3 swap we're working on. And uh, I'm piecing together some of the transmission lines. And so I actually, um, I ordered the kit, um, one of the cheap kits. I ordered it for the transmission. I already see that the um, uh, radiator won't actually work. So I'm gonna have to go to a parts store and get an adapter like a, um, uh, I guess an AN fitting. I think it's like maybe a, I don't think it's a 10, maybe a 6 AN or something like that down to a pop thread or something. Uh, but either way, I'm gonna have to find a, a different fitting. But let's, uh, let's look at that kit. This is one that I'm having to try to figure out on my own. And it does fit the transmission side. It had uh, the older style um, pieces in it, but I actually took them out and I've got mine will actually fit in it. So it wouldn't actually screw into the older pieces, but it once you take those out, um, my, my new stuff will actually um, thread into the transmission itself. So uh, let's take a look at what we've got for the, the GMC Canyon 5.3 swap. All right, so that kit came with, you can see here, um, came with some 90s. I think there's four of those. Then it came with four straight pieces and it will have um, just a regular fitting on it, pop thread or whatever, and then it's got like the compression fitting uh, on the other end. The old ones that come out of it were this style, if I can get it to focus was that style that it was actually in it. So this piece where, where this actually bolted in into the transmission, um, these will actually fit in. I couldn't, you know, just go into this, um, but the old pieces I took out. So you, it actually replaces the piece. And this is for the TH350, Turbo 350. Um, so this will actually um, go into the transmission itself. And this will actually go into the, the line. Now, on these, if it doesn't have, uh, you can see the difference how that's smooth. And then you can see how that one's got the taper on it, the, the end versus that. Okay, so you see the difference. Okay, when you have one of these ends, it will actually, and this is the lines that came with it as well. But when you have the end that's got that tapered piece on it, that's it. It actually goes in, well, inside, it's got like the, that shape inside there. So when you actually take the one that resembles that shape and you put it in there, well, that actually presses in. That can, creates, um, um, well, it closes and you can, you know, it bottoms out and it tightens up. Well, on these, uh, it threads all the way until you, you know, can't turn it anymore. But, the way these generally work is they're just a hair smaller on the ends and they get bigger as they go as you tighten that up. Um, so that should only go so far. Sometimes you may end up, you know, getting about half the threads in, like I think these were. Um, but I generally try to Teflon anything. It doesn't have that compression style fitting. So these are, um, their compression fittings on the line side. And on the transmission itself will be um, this style, and you'll probably have to Teflon that end. Uh, that's the kit that come with it. And uh, it come with all the fittings and everything, and it wasn't very much. And I did get a an actual steel braided style um, dipstick. So this is a just a cheaper dipstick, you can see. Uh, the end, it actually has the bushings on the the end there, or the um, seals. And then it's um, this style type, it's, it's a wire type that goes through. And it actually doesn't have the, the full mark, so I'm gonna have to match it up to the, um, the factory Turbo 350. I'm gonna have to match it up to the actual turbo 350 transmission dipstick and make my marks because this thing doesn't have any marks so that's something you want to look for too if you buy something like this um, aftermarket just make sure if it doesn't have the marks um, 
try to make sure it's the same length and that type of thing and make those marks uh, prior to changing everything. All right, I'm gonna just give you a quick, um, just a quick glimpse of what I'm working on right now. This is all new to me. That's a 2010 Subaru Outback Sport. I end up buying this thing. Supposedly head gaskets are bad and um, I think the water pump uh, may have been leaking a little bit. I'm not really sure. I do know it has a rear seal leak and I debated on just going ahead and pulling the whole motor out. It's not that bad. Um, I'm going to talk to the guy that I got this thing from and see how bad it used oil or how bad it leaked or whatever. Um, it does have some residue, but it's not just pouring out or anything. I am going to do the head gaskets and the, the water pump and everything, but this is just a quick look at this. Like I say, this is something I don't know. I've not done a lot of it very little on any type of Subaru um, but I'm just gonna show you kind of what I'm working on and and then like I say this is all a new experience for me so I'm kind of just winging it here I don't know anything about this car all right so far what, what I got is um, I did go ahead and pull the line off of the uh, power steering I pulled the radiator hose I did see some videos where the guys are are leaving the the radiator is still attached and all that. I'm going to pull it out. It's just safer for me. Um, I don't want to poke a hole in my radiator because it didn't take just a little more time to pull it out and get out of my way. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take all the, the intake, all the stuff holding the intake on, take all that stuff off. I've took the air intake, air box and all that off. This being a new um, adventure for me on this car, I'm going to take off more than I have to. Just I want to look at the motor. I want to get my hands on it. I want to look at the layout of it. I pulled the alternator. Um, kind of studying a little as I as I go with this thing. Um, I do watch some videos if I get stuck or if I can't remember where something goes. Um, the crank pulley on this one, evidently, it's a big deal that you um, just put your uh, breaker bar on it, kick it over to the side, and just bump the engine over, and it'll knock it loose. It's way easier that way. I did do that. Um, so I got, got the crank pulley off and uh, you can see I've got a, a start on it. I, I'm going to go ahead and do the head gasket and that water pump and everything. I don't have any parts yet, but I want to start taking it apart and, and kind of get my, my hands dirty, fooling with this thing, just getting ahead of it, I guess. Um, I'm going to see if I can pull the AC. It looks like I can pull the AC without having to to discharge it or anything. I do have the machine, it's at the house, um, but I, I think I can actually um, unbolt the compressor and move it off to the side over there somewhere. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna pull the intake off and get it completely out, look at the gaskets and all that, kind of learn this motor a little bit. Um, I did see um, there's like a water line and stuff down through here underneath. I'm gonna look at a couple places where if this thing leaked oil or anything or water leaks or anything if for future reference um, if you know if there's a water leak or oil leak what I was under there and where it could be coming from so this is a learning experience for me so kind of taking my time a little bit at a time um, but yeah sometimes that's what you got to do I mean this is absolutely an entirely different thing for me I've never worked on one of these so yeah that's what I'm working on on top of the Finance Civic, the 350Z, and the GMC Canyon LS swap. And that's new to me too, for the most part. Um, but I, I've got some new parts in it. I did actually get the, the hoses in um, on that, and I'll show you those too. The, I did get the transmission lines hooked in and I still got to get the 350Z out from under it and finish plumbing those into the um, radiator but I don't have the right fittings to actually attach it to the radiator so I will be having to deal with that once I get that going but I've got um, the starter still yet I've got to do some electrical on the um, fuel pump uh, some a few more things underneath this and I've got to get this car out from under it so I can let it down and, and Work on the top a little bit because I've got to cut a place for the shifter and all that But yeah, stay with us. We're still working on stuff here